Greetings adventurers and welcome to Skill Tree where we learn how to do just about everything. Now as we've said multiple times we're going to conquest like honestly in like two weeks it's kind of crazy and as such I'm trying to get all my kit together. Oh no nope we've learned from last time I'm gonna move this over here. R.I.P. to the Empress Jin. So sad. And aside from the costume stuff that's coming, and honestly, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you just a little bit of it later on. But aside from that, I realized that I don't have a lot of pouches. I mean, I have a lot of like one kind of pouch, which is this kind of like drawstring job I got going on right here. The problem with this is it's not too secure and it can be kind of a pain to like, if I need things to untie and open up. Aside from that, I have the pouches I've made on the show, one of which is red, which in Conquest is like a stealable item if you're wearing it red. So that's not a good idea to have a pouch with. And the other one is my nutsack that I've made here. That still gets me. That's still funny to me. But it's seen quite a bit of wear and tear at this point. I've been using it to train my dog. It has this little, this little treats for every time he's a good boy. Anyways, long story short, it is time for a brand new pouch. So I figured today we can learn how to make, well, how to make this little kidney pouch here. I've been wanting to make one of these for a while. They're fancy, they're multi-purpose. And honestly, I just, I really like how they look. And they're not hard at all to make. I think you're really gonna dig this project. So without much further, oh, no. So without much further ado, let's jump right into it and level up this skill. No, I'm gonna level with you, fair viewer. And I, I know I say this all the time, but I was, I was straight up winging it with this project here. We need to get our merch game going on so I can have a t-shirt that just says, I'm just winging it or something. But basically, I'm not starting with a template. I'm going to make one as I go. So I figured the most important thing to think of when we're thinking of a pouch is kind of like, how much do you want it to hold, right? I didn't want this thing to be comically large on me, but I didn't want it to be so small that I can't actually make it useful. But I found the easiest way to assess this was by comparing it to an item I already had. In this case, this bowl here. This bowl just happens to fill in the perfect kind of size and shape for how I would want it on the hip, as well as the amount of volume that it holds. With that understanding, I can basically use that to make these rounded out sections here. To do that, I just put it onto some newsprint and traced around the circumference of the bowl. That being said, it's not gonna be a perfect circle, right? It only comes up to this little partial circle here, like 75%, before it becomes these little wraparound straps here that go on your belt. So I just end up measuring up five and a half inches to mark where that line would start. Now, since the back all the way to the front panel, including these tabs are all one piece, and my standard belt ends up being about two inches wide, I decided that this little, the little tabs here needed to be two inches wide, which when opened up would be four inches long. So I went ahead and used my ruler to measure out 16 inches, which is gonna give me the total length when all of this is opened up. Then at that mark, I laid the bowl back down and used it to draw another circle. Then I simply connected those circles at their widest points with my straight edge. The space in between those two partial circles is what's gonna end up becoming my tab here. So to account for this thickness I've got going on here, I actually just used the width of my ruler and traced out those lines. Once I have those straight edges in place, I go back in with my bowl there, lining them up where the top of that circle will flatten out. Basically where it becomes this part right here. This just gives me a nice consistent shape to work with so it matches with what the rest of the bag is doing. Then I go back in and erase my line so I don't get confused later on. On the other side, since I want this flap to be a bit shorter, I only measured five inches rather than five and a half. Then added my bowl shape into the top of that one as well. And real quick, while you're making things like this, don't get too caught up on the measurements. As you can see, I'm using a bowl and like kind of winging it there. But like if you want this flap to be a little bit shorter or a little bit longer, like it, it tightens up via a little, a little strap here. So this could have only been like half of the size it is if that's what you're going for. I guess what I'm saying is you have a lot of freedom with things like this. So have fun, change the shape of this, make it kind of crazy, make it look like a leaf or something. Really whatever fits into your character or the world that you're making. All right, so once I was happy with that, I just went back in with my razor knife and cut my template out of the paper. Then I just fold the template up to make sure it has the general shape that I'm going for. Once I was satisfied with that, it was over to my leather. Now the leather I'm using here is about a six ounce, like four to six ounce veg tan. And this is another portion I'd leave up to you. If you use like a chrome tan, you're gonna be stuck to the color and you're not gonna be able to do a lot of tooling, but it's gonna be like less stiff, right? Your veg tan ends up being a little bit more stiff, but you can do more with it. And again, just before I get too far with this project, I fold the whole thing up to make sure I really like how it looks. Knowing that's all good though, I go ahead and treat the edges like I usually do with my edge beveler and then my slicker. By the way, if you're new here and you're trying this as like your first leather craft project, first and foremost, it's a good one. It's a good one to start on. It's not all that hard. 
But I am breezing by some topics that we've covered in past episodes. So check out this playlist here if you ever feel lost at all. So with the edges all smooth and sexy, I went back in with this groover here just to give me some edge detail all around the piece. This will also give me some lines to follow later on when I go to sew this thing together. All right, so so far it's been really easy. We busted out a bowl, we have some rulers, we went ahead and just cut this one big shape out. The hard part though, I find, is when it came to, to this the actual pouch section here. First and foremost, you definitely want this one to be a flexible material. Veg tan is gonna be really hard unless you use what I'm using here, which is a milled veg tan. It has kind of the properties that you'd expect to get with like a chrome tan, being that it's more fabric-like and you can kind of like drape it around things a little bit, but you're still able to dye it in all of that like a veg tan. That being said, if I had to go back and do it, well, I don't know. I really really do like this, but I think it'd be easier to do with a chrome tan. So just keep that in mind, this portion at least, I might recommend a chrome tan instead. Anyways, the reason why it's hard is because it's not like a flat shape, right? It's, it's got this kind of three-dimensional mound going on here, so it can be a pocket. And I'm not gonna lie to you, there probably, there probably is a way to just like calculate the volume of it with the shape and all that jazz. But I'm gonna keep this, I'm gonna keep this real simple for, for both of us, because honestly, I don't know how to do that yet. <laughs> I'd love to give you a better excuse, but I just, I haven't learned it yet. And time was, time was of the essence here. So instead what I did was I took some of this double-sided Tanner's Bond tape and put it all along the rim where I'd need that little sack area to connect to. Once that was all lined up, I just removed the paper backing, leaving me with the adhesive. Then I grabbed a ball o fabric about the volume I would like this bag to be in and draped my leather over that, carefully sticking it so it was nice and taut all along those edges there. And by nice and taut, I mostly mean I don't want like wrinkles and stuff, right? I want this to be a very smooth transition all the way around. Once it was stuck into place, I just went back in with some scissors, straightened out that top section, and then cut all of the excess all around my bag. And as you can see, this worked out really well. It fits like it was made to fit right there, and it'll hold a really good volume. I was actually, I'm gonna, uh, that stretch before I do that, I'm gonna tap myself in the back for that one. It took me nothing to do. There was no measurements or calculations to do, and it just, it works perfectly. It's exactly what I wanted it to be. So, you know, cheers for laziness and ingenuity, I guess. Anyways, now that I have both those pieces, I wanted to separate them again, so I just kind of pulled it off of the tape, just so I could have an easier time dyeing them separately and also tooling this piece here. Now to get this front portion ready for tooling, I went ahead and cased the leather, which is what you call it when you wet leather before tooling it. And for the tool, I'm using this basket weave stamp that basically just makes like a basket pattern. It's super easy to use. Once you stamp one down, there are little dots in the corners that you can line it up for the next one and just continue through. It is now my favorite stamp to fill up like large portions of space and honestly look really good doing it. Though I'm gonna be honest with you, in some of these shots you can see like up in this corner, for some reason, I am wholly unable to keep my pattern straight all the way through. Like all this side, perfect. All here, perfect. But once I got up to here, it's just like, I don't know. Though I will say, it's the last portion I was doing, and I might I might have been drinking a little while we were going. I don't know. It's, correlation is not causation, so I'm not saying that's what it is. It might be what it is. Let's be honest. <laughs> now, because I didn't want that basket weave pattern to just end there and look kind of silly, and I didn't want it to continue all the way around because I thought that would look silly too, I just went back in with my swivel knife and gave myself a nice little line to end it. Then went back in with my edge beveler to sink in that detail and make it more part of the overall picture. And I think this worked out really nice. It gave it a good finished look there just before it goes into those little hangy tabs. That's what these are. It's a technical name. Hangy tabs. Now you know. And that's it. With that, we're done with the tooling. Now we just go ahead and get this thing ready to die. To do this, I cased the leather again because I found in this episode here that when you pre-wet the leather, it actually does help things go on a little bit more evenly. For my top portion, I decided to use a dark brown dye, just making sure I covered everything nice and evenly, both front and back. For the actual pouch portion, I decided to use a light brown just to give me a little bit of contrast. Though to be honest, I kind of wish I went even lighter. I think it would look nice if this was maybe like a saddle tan or just a much lighter brown. I'm still happy with it, but I, I was really looking for more of a poppy contrast. You know what I mean? Now, once both of those were dry, I went back into that top panel and added some antiquing gel just to make all of my tooling work really stick out and give it a little bit more darkness to that color. That said, once it was all said and done, it felt very flat, like it was too dark. 
So I decided to go back over the whole thing with a little bit of steel wool, just lightening the areas that I wanted to kind of in the middle and adding a bit of a vignette. This does double duty too, because I want this character to feel really lived in. So I want to weather some of the pieces that they're wearing. So by adding some wear to like the top area here where it would brush against other people and things as he walks by. And just like on the top here where it bent over the belt and the back where it's touching him all day. All those little things make this seem like it's a piece that's been well used and well loved. That said, for some reason, and I don't know, I have it around here somewhere, but the, the steel wool that I used, I think was like too aggressive of a steel wool. And rather than just seeing the wear, you can kind of see the scratch marks in it. Luckily through like bad trial and error, by making a mistake, I've actually learned something really cool about leather bomb. Specifically this Fibings leather bomb that I get from Tandy Leather with Atom Wax in it. I've noticed that when I add it to my leather, it actually almost reconstitutes the leather on the surface and moves it around a lot. Basically taking that top layer of dye and redistributing it very lightly. And this is after I've already buffed it and removed it. Like if I took a, a clean white paper towel and I brushed it across before I add the leather bomb, nothing comes off. I've already taken all of the extra kind of dried dye off of it. For some reason, when I add that leather bomb though, it makes the top layer of that dye wet again and just kind of mellows everything out. In some cases, that's awesome. Like in this case, it covered up all those more like aggressive scratch marks and just made it look worn. It's exactly what I was looking for. Also, if you've like got an uneven dye job, it tends to mellow that out a little bit. Where it's a problem is when you have multicolored dye jobs. Like where I learned this, I had like red and black together and that black just streaked right into the red. I was so upset. So lesson learned, be really careful when you're doing it with multicolors, but if you really need to mellow out something that you're working with, that stuff works great. And provides this beautiful shine. Like, look at that. It's not too plasticky looking like some of the sealers can do. I really like that stuff. I, I fully endorse it. I like it. Now, another thing to watch out for, especially with alcohol-based dyes, is they tend to dry out your leather. The leather balm and atom wax will help with that, but you definitely want to like, move the leather around and kind of break some of that stiffness just so it'll do the things you want it to do and actually move around. Otherwise, this thing will be like stuck open like this the whole time and just look terrible. All right, so to connect these two pieces together, the first thing I did was go over the edges with this wing divider here just to show me where I wanted my glue to sit. Once I had that done with both pieces, I went back in with some barge contact cement, making sure I had good coverage all inside of that line I made. Then after waiting the recommended 10 to 15 minutes for it to cure, I carefully placed that pouch piece all along the edge of the backing, making sure it lined up as perfectly as I could. And look at how good that came out. I am so happy that that lined up the way it did and just by kind of like draping it over while it was taped up was able to get that perfect of a fit. I'm really happy with that. Glad with how that was set up, I just brought it over to my leather sewing machine and locked it into place. Now you for sure can hand stitch this whole thing. In fact, I would recommend you hand stitch it because it's usually like a stronger stitch if you do a saddle stitch. But again, your boy's real tight on time. So I use my stitcher that I showed in this episode here in case you're interested. Now with that secure, we have a working pouch, but this little back portion here could still be opened up, which is kind of useless because then everything will fall out. So we really want to secure this whole middle section here. To do that, it's more of the same. Just adding some contact adhesive to both sides and making sure to put them carefully together so everything lines up. Then it was back to the sewing machine just to lock it into place. And now we're cooking, look at this thing. This is a working pouch, it looks awesome. Now the last couple steps we have on this thing is basically just trying to keep it closed and secure. First things first, I really wanted this inner pouch to close by itself so that it doesn't just rely on this kind of outer flap to keep it safe. In order to do that, I just took my hole punch and punched 10 holes all along the outside of that pouch and two more holes through the back. It's really important you count your holes. Like in my head, I go, all right, I go in, out in, out, in, out, so that I know where those fall. Because if you have like an odd number or if you needed an odd number for whatever kind of design you're going for, it's hard to cover that up later on. And just as an aside, I did the holes through the back of the pouch because I wanted that when you tighten it up, that top pulls itself in towards that back, right? If I didn't do that, if I had it just connected to itself, one, this cord would kind of block the opening there. And two, when it did pull in, those edges would be left a little bit open, which I wouldn't want. I really want everything just to pull tight to the back and secure all my, my goodies inside of there. Now for my strap, I'm just using some of this leather cordage that I had lying around. 
Once that's all threaded in and out of the holes I made, I add a little wooden bead to it and tie off the end so that that bead can't fall off. That little bead makes it way easier to close the bag. Otherwise, you're just kind of pulling on the leather straps and trying to even it out that way. The bead pushes against the leather and ultimately just kind of saves your straps from all that pulling and is much easier to use. Now for the finishing touch on this thing, I wanted to add a strap buckle assembly just to keep this top flap closed. That's gonna give me some extra security that all my stuff isn't gonna fall out. And honestly, it's gonna look really good. I like that design. To do that, I just put together these two straps here that I dyed the same dark brown as the top. I've done straps a million times. So again, check out that playlist if you ever feel lost or anything. Now you'll notice the top of one of those straps is rounded, which is specifically to be able to fit one of these little conchos here. A concho is just like a little round decorative piece with a screw in the back. So you can actually just kind of screw it onto your leather. To set my strap into place, I positioned it where I wanted it and traced around it with a pencil. Then I just used the spikes on my wing divider to rough it up right there a little bit so the glue had something to stick to. Then back to the contact adhesive, buttering both sides. Once that was secured where I wanted it, I sewed that into place to make sure it didn't move. And that I did hand stitch mostly because I, I broke my machine. I don't know what I did. I think I, I haven't oiled it in a while. It just seized up. I had to take it apart. It's real sad. But once that was secured, I just put the concho in place and tighten that screw down to lock that in as well. And I really like that look. You're gonna notice, by the way, that this one is the same one that's on my hat. And my story before was that I had stolen my hat from a pirate. So I'm thinking I stole this from that same pirate. In fact, in my head, the pirate is a woman and my character lost the game and decided to try to romance them instead. Basically pretending they had all the money to pay them like, oh yeah, I'm gonna pay, buy her a drink, give her a little bit of the money up front and be like, I'll get that back too, but how about we spend a little quality time together? I don't know what the head thing was, but Anyway, flash to him the next morning, grabbing her hat and her pouch and just sneaking out. <laughs> Gee, why is she chasing me to the end of the earth, I wonder? What a jerk. All right, anyways, to get the other end of that buckle assembly attached, I just actually clipped it into place where it would go on the strap so that I could position it accurately on the back and use an awl to mark where the hole should go. Then just popped in some rapid rivets. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna time out right there real quick. I'm like, then just pop in some rapid rivets like it was easy. It was not, it was not easy. I would recommend putting that part in before you put the rest of it together. Because if you look at the inside of the bag here, like you can't even see where the heads of those rivets are. It was so hard to like fish a little piece of metal in there and have it stay secure so that I could hammer through. I'm not even sure it's, it's perfectly connected to be honest with you. I think this one can still be tightened down just a little bit more. Long story short, don't, don't do that. Put it, put this piece on first, please. But with that, look at how sexy this thing is. It fits right on my belt and it looks slick. And it does all the things a pouch should do. It opens, it holds goodies, it closes, and this one has the added benefit of being able to holster a sword too. Exactly what the adventurer on the go is looking for. This was a really cool product to make. Every time I've passed by one of these in like a stall somewhere or whatever, I've been like, oh, I want one of those, but I'm cheap and I know I can make something myself. So I'm like, I'll just make it myself and I never get around to it. So I'm really happy I have one now and I'm gonna get good use out of this in Conquest. Oh, speaking of Conquest, I wanted, I wanted, to, I wanna show you something just cause I'm excited about it. Look at this dope ass jacket I got from Berg Snyder. Look at this. Oh, it's so cool. It's long, look, ready? Uh, I love it. Though it definitely needs some work. I wanna weather it like I talked about. This character is gonna feel really well lived in. Maybe put some patches here or something. Leave down in the comment section some things you think would be really cool to add or change about this. I think that's gonna be, I think that's gonna be next episode. I don't think I can wait to play with it. So I think like right after I'm done filming here, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start playing with this thing. But back to my bag here. Thank you so much for watching me make it. I hope you enjoyed it and you saw that like a project like this isn't all that hard. I was able to kind of figure out the layout of the thing with a bowl and a ruler. So yeah, do give this a shot. And if you do, make sure you join our Discord, link in the description below so you can show me how you did. I'd love to see your version of this bag. Now, if you like what you saw here today or just mildly enjoyed my shenanigans, consider giving me some of that like it love and don't forget to subscribe so you know when I release new content. In the meantime though, Keep leveling up, you. You've made it to the end screen. YouTube loves it when you do that. It is a fantastic way to support this channel. 
Another fantastic way to support this channel is by joining these people's noble ranks. These are our Patreon members, and this ship does not sail without them. I love them all dearly, and because of them, we're able to do this thing. A special thanks to our newest high tier level Patreon members, TurboWolf76 and Recurno. I think I got that wrong. Recur Hold on a sec. I'm gonna spell it for you. It's R K U R N E L M. Recurno? R Colonel? Regardless, I love you very much, and thank you so much for helping to support what we do here. If you'd like to support what we do here, consider joining our Patreon, link in the description below. Otherwise, you can click on one of these videos that YouTube thinks you'd like, and that really helps out a lot too. While you figure that out, I'm just gonna sit here and fondle my sack. You heard me.